Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel Programming Knowledge. This is our first Adobe Illustrator tutorials video and in today's tutorial we are going to create this vector. So this is a very simple vector and that is why we have chosen this in our first tutorial. But you are going to learn a variety of concepts in creating this vector. The most important one being the use of this shape builder tool which is going to help you in creating the different kinds of vectors in Adobe Illustrator. So let's get started. For this what you need to do is first open up your Adobe Illustrator and then press Ctrl N to bring up this panel. This is basically the same thing that you get when you click on a create new tab. Uh, so I have selected this A4 preset for my vector but you are free to choose any preset that you like. Then uh, I'm going to rename it as vector1 and the rest of the settings I'm going to keep the same. Then I'm going to click on create and as soon as you do that you will see that your artboard is in front of you. Now what I'm going to do is just go to this artboard tool and change the size of this artboard. Go back to your selection tool and press Ctrl 0 on your keyboard. Now as soon as you do that you will see that your artboard has fitted your visibility area and that's exactly what we need. Now for the infinity logo uh, what we are going to do is just grab onto our ellipse tool and draw an ellipse by pressing on the shift key to make a perfect circle instead of an ellipse. Once you are happy with the size, you can just go to this window into the menu bar and select on this align. Now align it horizontally at the center. Now uh, while your object or the circle is selected, go to edit. Here you will find an option of copy whose shortcut is a simple control C. So you can just click on it. Go to edit and here you will find an option of paste in place. So you got to select this paste in place. What will it do? It will paste that copied object onto the same place as that of the previous object. Now if we just paste it anywhere else, then you can see that it has been pasted over here. So that's not what we needed. So I'm just going to delete it. And here if you see there are these two circles that have been created. So we have to resize it but by pressing on the shift and the alt key together. Now um, when we pressed our shift and alt key while resizing our circle you can see that it resized similarly across all the dimensions and its center also coincided with the center of the bigger circle making two concentric circles and this is exactly that what we needed and that is why we use the shift and alt key. Now what we are going to do since we have already copied this circle over here so we are going to edit and select this paste in place option once again. Then I am going to right click over here go to arrange and select the send to back option. Make sure that this smaller circle is visible. Then again I am going to resize this circle by pressing on the shift key. This time I have not pressed on the alt key while resizing my circle. Now I am going to rearrange this circle. Okay, now after the rearrangement, this is the kind of uh, position for this circle that we wanted. And this is exactly that what you need to do. You have to press the shift key and change its dimensions and then rearrange it so that it intersects with this smaller circle over here and with this larger circle over here. Then select on the circle, press Ctrl C to copy it and Ctrl Shift V to paste it in place and just change its direction or position to here. What I'm going to do now is select all of my circles together and select their fill as none so that their boundaries are visible then just again copy the circle and again press ctrl shift v to paste it in place and arrange its position like this now this is the kind of the matrix that we wanted 
Now what I'm going to do is just press Ctrl Y on the keyboard to bring up this kind of matrix. This is the matrix of the circle without any formatting. Now you got to make sure that all these circles are intersecting well. You can just zoom in and check these intersection points. These intersection points are very important. Once you have checked them, you can just press Ctrl 0 for this default zoom percentage and again Ctrl Y to bring up this uh, shape again. Then just select all of them, right click and select on this group. Now all of these are grouped. If you just select one shape, then all of these shapes would be selected. Then press Ctrl C to copy them and Ctrl Shift V to paste them in place and drag this new shape over here like this. Now you can just um, select this shape, right click and select on this ungroup option. Now we are going to make use of our shape builder tool. So for that select all of your drawings then grab on this shape builder tool. Now you can see that these areas are being selected individually. So what we are going to do first of all is come to this smallest circle and by pressing on the alt key just click on it. This will deduct this smaller circle area from this whole circle and again you got to press the alt key and click on it. This will again deduct this whole area of this smaller circle from this bigger circle. Now uh, what we are going to do is just drag these shapes together and these shapes would be grouped together like this. So this is the work of the shape builder tool. This is one shape that we have got and now I'm going to include in this thing as well into this shape so this is what i'm happy with this is one shape this is going to be my other shape so i'm just going to drag it like this now on pressing the control uh, and zero we have got our basic shape like this now what we are going to do is um, just select any one of this shape and apply a gradient from over here now you can see that this black and white gradient has been applied and apart from that this menu has been opened in front of us so what we are going to do is just click on this small arrow over here and select this orange and yellow gradient or if you want we can also select this fading sky gradient then double click on this gradient slider and you will find all these color options in front of you now you can just choose any two colors or more than two colors for your gradient as per your choice the sample vector that i showed had the shades of green so this time i'm going to use the shades of blue this dark blue now uh, this is what i have got and if you want you can just adjust your gradient slider like this or uh, you can just choose the colors like this apart from here uh, you can also choose your gradient to be of a radial type or just change its angle if you have chosen a linear type so i'm going to choose a angle of minus 60 degrees now uh, i'm just going to select the second shape and pick on to my color picker tool or the eyedropper tool and select this particular gradient and then my um, second gradient or the second shape would be filled with this particular gradient as well and this is exactly that what i'm going to do with all these other shapes as well now the only thing that looks odd is this outlining of my shape 
so just select all of your shapes go to stroke over here and select it to that of that particular gradient with which we filled our shape so with this our logo or the vector has been created and as you can see it looks pretty cool to look at now if you want you can just uh, select this artboard tool once again and change the size of this artboard so that whatever the vector you have drawn it completely fits your artboard and that is all in today's tutorial if you enjoyed it please let me know your thoughts in the comments below and for more such tutorials keep watching the youtube channel programming knowledge